me to tell behind the mic. Again, welcome to all of you as we gather today to worship God on this beautiful day and to also give thanks for the presence, witness, and ministry of Alcoholics Anonymous in Mansfield for about 85 years, I think, and 79 years, or no, for 79 years with the first group that started here and at Grace Church for over 70 years. And for AA folks, we're known as third in Bowman and we're kind of the spiritual home. And in fact, in October, there will be the 79th anniversary of the group here, which is Richmond County's oldest AA meeting, and I am pretty sure I've been told is the second or third longest running continuous meeting in the world. So that's something we're very proud of and want to give thanks for. Uh, one, there is an offering plate, I invite you to make your offerings. Two, in your prayers, particularly remember Roger Metcalf. Roger is in the hospital and uh, he's going to be undergoing chemotherapy, but with some of the tests and all, he had a tough time, and they went ahead and admitted him, so please keep Roger in your prayers as well. Our opening hymn is one of my favorite pieces, Wayfaring Strangers.
Traveling through this world of There's no sins told of danger That bright world I'm bound to go I'm going there to meet my father Gather round me, I know the way is rough and steep, golden fields lie out before me, out where my dream in the heavens be, I'm going there to meet my mother, I'm going I forgot, of course, to welcome our special guest, Dan and Teresa of Upriver Music, and we're very glad to have him here today. They played several times at St. Matthew's, and Kay was good enough to share the contact information for me with me so we could get, in to get them here today. And I also want to introduce a person I hope you're going to see more of in the future. Sitting over here in the shorts and t-shirt is Jonathan Stuff, who is the pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church out on Park Avenue. And we, Jonathan and I have become very good friends over the last two or three months. I preached there this morning. Hopefully you'll get to hear from him before long, too. And we're looking, we're asking God to talk about what it might look like in the future if the two congregations started thinking, what could we do together? So I hope you'll take the chance to meet Jonathan and to get you, you to see more of him in the future. Please follow in your bulletin as we begin our service. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let our prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the vesper light. And we implore you of your, our, your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To begin our worship, let us ask God's forgiveness and renewal using the form of the night prayer from page 86 of the AA Big Book. God, forgive me where I have been resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid to death. Help me not to keep anything to myself, but to discuss it all openly with another person. Show me where I owe an apology and help me to make it. Help me to be kind and loving to all people. Use me in the mainstream of life, God. Remove worry, remorse, and morbid or sick reflection that I may be of use to others. Amen. 
May the almighty and merciful God forgive us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was to begin, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us read together the O Gracious Lord. O gracious love, your brightness is the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the best of life, we sing your praises, O God, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to praise my happy voice. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world. Let us read Psalm 124 responsibly by whole verse. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, Then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger towards us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, for they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites. They made their lives bitter with hard service and work and every kind of field work. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them named Shephrah and the other Buah, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women, see them on the birth stool. If it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. Because the midwives feared God, he gave them family. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. When she saw he was, that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then she said, then his sister came to Pharaoh's daughter. Shall I go and get a nurse, your nurse from the Hebrew one? from the Hebrew women to nurse this child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
that is joining the Dominic Benedict as Domine, responsibly by Holy Ghost. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the splendor in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My mouth, the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, the Lord our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm not an alcoholic. But I am the son of an alcoholic, and I was and the product of three generations of an alcoholic family system on both sides of my family. So to come today to celebrate and to act and to give thanks to the ministry and presence of AA, I have some understanding of what that's all about. I've been affected by the disease, and I have been blessed by the AA family. And that's part of what I want to talk to you about. On the inside sheet of your bulletin, you will see the 12 steps of Alcoholic Anonymous. I know you've all heard about them, but how many of you could name more than two or three of them? There's some folks that could. I highly encourage you to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, as we say in the colic from the prayer book. These are the basics of spiritual formation. Today, in this time of pandemic, we're hearing a lot of about how we have to learn to be church in a different way. We go online, we contact each other, we do this, we do that, we meet outside, we don't have communion. We have to find new ways to allow God to form His church. I would suggest to you that one of the models we might look at is one that's been around for a while, AA. And I want to talk through a few of those steps and let you know a little bit of how that's been in my life. And I think they also directly reflect the question in today's gospel lesson. You notice what has happened? Jesus says to his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? Who am I? They say, well, one people say that you're John the Baptist, we brought back to life. Others say Elijah or one of the prophets. And a generally thing, if we as a group, someone asked us, who do you say Jesus is? Chances are we'd start by putting something back at them like the creeds, right? The basics are, you know, or maybe our favorite hymn or something. But Jesus isn't satisfied with that question. It's kind of a generic question about what other people say. Then ask, who do you say that I am? Because real growth as people of God always means being able to answer that question at a very personal, very real level. And that's when Peter responds by saying, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now that's a word, those words Messiah, Messiah is one that we hear and we think we know, but it meant a whole lot more for a Jewish man than it means for us. Messiah was the long awaited one. Messiah was the one who would take, uh, bring out Israel out of its long darkness. Messiah was the one who would bring about the, great, the kingdom of God in our midst. Messiah was the Holy One. The one to whom they belong, the one for whom they yearn, and the one who they await. So when Peter says that, he's saying a lot. And Jesus responds saying, Blessed are you, Simon. For flesh and blood did not tell you this, but the Spirit of God. So as I thought about it, I realized that how I answer that second question, who are you, who do I say Jesus is, has been shaped and formed in many ways through my experience of Alcoholics Anonymous and particularly the Adult Children of Alcohol Program, one of the family of AA programs. It's there that I learned much about what it means to really give myself to the child. For the first two or three steps, Again, with knowledge that God is God and I'm not. I like to be in control. It's about recognizing that whether I like it or not, I'm not in control. And in fact, if I try to be in control, I'm not probably going to mess things up pretty bad. That is the beginning of any walk of God. Recognizing God is God and we as a creature. And I remember how that came into play several years ago, but probably, well, would have been in the 1990s when I was director of St. Uh, St. Thomas Church in Springdale, Arkansas, and we were in the midst of building a new building, in the midst of a capital campaign, architect plans, and everything else, and I literally had worked myself to the point of exhaustion and almost physical illness because everything had to get done and had to get done right. 
and my senior warden, a long time member of Alcoholics Anonymous, Arch, came to me and said, you know, Joe, I want you to think about something. Who's in control here? It's not going to work if you try to control it. This is God's project. And you're important to it, but don't try to be God in our midst. It's both a moment of reckoning and it was a moment of relief, and it probably saved the project from how I would have screwed it up. After we've recognized and honored the reality that God is God and we are God, the AA steps move on to talk about the reality of the weaknesses and sicknesses that are part of who we are. And in particular, in the alcoholic situation, the weakness and sickness of an addiction to alcohol. But all the myriad of ramifications that has for that person and for all those around them. And it's the same issue with all of us, the weaknesses and sicknesses which we have, and the ramifications of those ourselves and others. And it talks about making a fearless and moral inventory, fearless moral inventory, naming that reality, the ways we've fallen short of who God called us to be, and more than that, sharing it with another person. And the primary reason we do that and share with another person is because it is much easier when we've done that to accept the fact that God actually does it. And to start over. AA understands that need to do that in the community. Part of what AA is about and the close relationships that occur between members, sponsors, and all is holding one and another accountable being called into accountability, being able to say in honesty, this is who I am and this is how I fouled up. And I need to start over again. Another little story like that. It was in that same parish about a year after we finished the building that I made a huge blunt. I won't go into it, but it was embarrassing, it was awkward, and it was bad. And I didn't quite know what to do. Chris, I know none of you can believe I made a mistake. Chris was actually the treasurer of the parish and also a recovering alcoholic and drug user. Came to see me because he realized some of what I was struggling with. And he looked at me and said, Father Joe, do you really think you're any more special than the rest of us? Get over your pride, own up to what you did, do what you can do to fix it, and get on with living. Live what you say you believe, that God will forgive you. And know that if anybody wants to give you any real trouble about it, we'll have your back. That is what being in church is about. It was a moment of freedom. It was a moment of reminding me who I am. Those of us with the collars sometimes think we can't acknowledge that we have any mistakes, any problems. It's a time of allowing the community to say, okay, you messed up. Guess what? You're human too. And God forgives. Then the story of AA goes on as you read through those lessons to talk about continuing to be accountable to one another. Continuing to meet and share our lives as we journey into new relationships, new, new sense of wholeness, out of being forgiven and out of getting the right relationship with God. I can't imagine a much better description of what it means to be the church than to be those who support one another on that kind of journey. And again and again, I can give you examples of how AA folks were there in the parishes I've served. It's also the time to record us another one, like Lucy, who when I finally decided I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of cigarettes, I was going to quit, gave me the kind of support that I needed told me a minute, and I knew she meant it, if I needed to, if I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and didn't think I was going to be able to go without a cigarette and give her a call, and we'd talk about it. Encouraged me, supported me, and helped me through what was a difficult transition, overcoming that very, very real addiction. That's the kind of support we're talking about. 
I think the last part of those AA 12 steps talks about having experience. This renewal, this rebuilding of our very souls, this new relationship with God and others. We invite others to share that. We find ways to help others experience that same freedom, that same healing, that same being loved. In the church, we call that evangelism. In AA, we call it being there to help anyone who comes in, anyone who needs the help to address their addiction, anyone who comes and presents himself to them, or anyone we know that we can invite into that fellowship. Supporting them and inviting them to come to a deeper sense of awareness of sobriety and hope. I'll tell you one more story that relates to that. And that one happened here in Mansfield. And I'll even use his name since now dead. Some of you know very well and remember Bill Davis, who was kind of the face of AA at Grace Church for several years. He was the one who set up the coffee pots, opened the doors, ran the meetings, etc. Bill was a special man. And I remember once I was talking to Bill, and I'd been at a couple of meetings, and I was complaining about, I found it frustrating and kind of disruptive, the folks who were coming in, and the only reason we were there is because they'd been ordered to come by the courts, and they had to get that piece of paper signed. And I kind of resented them being there messing up the meetings. I said something about it, and Bill looked at me and said, Well, you know, Joe, they can only mess me up if I left. That's their stuff to deal with, and i got to let them deal with that and not worry about it. And two, there's always the possibility that one of those that comes in on paper will discover something else. That's what I'm really interested in. How can we create a situation where one of them might be? But they might find something here that helps. You get it kind of pop my bubble. Talk to me, reminded me, our call is to love others where they are, when they are, how they are. Worry about ourselves and not about them. And that's it. I'm fixing or judging them. This is the church. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. In this time when we're talking about new ways to be church, how can you find a way to apply these principles? How can you find a new way to connect to someone? How can you find that person or persons that you can share that kind of deep trust with? Being mutually accountable, being honest, letting yourself truly be known, knowing, not judging, but loving. How do you find presence to see that in the way of who Jesus really is, the one who called us into that relationship, that kind of relationship that we can only take the step of because we've been understood and experienced the love for which he has shown us. Who is Jesus to me? He is the one who's in control whether I like it or not. Who I need to acknowledge and continue to give myself to give myself over to. He is the one that loves me even though he knows me. He loves me just the way I am and calls me to grow in the life. The one who holds me accountable or to who I'm accountable to. He is the one that will support me in each journey. And he is the one who brings me into fellowship. Brothers and sisters share that journey with me. He is the one that invites me to invite others into that fellowship. Think about it. How would you answer that question? How can you form the kind of church that would enable you to do it? Because this is what the world needs to do. Then it moves who Jesus is and the people who are for Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us continue as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was dead. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your saving, let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. May sit or stand as your most comfortable for the palace. Palace of the day. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A collect of thanksgiving for the work and ministry of AA. Gracious creator of all that is, we give you thanks and praise for the gifts of healing, sobriety, and hope which men and women have received through the work of Alcoholics Anonymous for the past 79 years, and especially for the presence and work of AA in Mansfield and at Grace Church for over 70 years. Give your saving grace to all to enter meetings this day and every day. Bless our community through the presence of your renewed and healed children. Give us the grace to share the wholeness we have found in AA and in all places where your transforming love is experienced. In your holy name. Pray. A prayer of surrender. My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellow. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. The colic for healing. Merciful God, we remember before you all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Grant to each of them and us the constant awareness of your loving concern and healing power, and restore each of them and us to health and wholeness of life, both now and forevermore. We especially remember all who are infected with the coronavirus and all who suffer from any form of addiction, remembering them aloud or silent. Father, we remember before you today those who come before us and have helped us grow in knowledge of and relationship with you. We especially remember those who were instrumental in the beginning of the work of AA in this community, sponsors who guided and supported us on our journey, friends who challenged and taught us, including those we now name silently or alive. Arch, Bill, We entrust them to your never-failing love and give thanks for our confidence that you are doing better things to them than we can imagine or ask. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please be seated.
forgot to mention was one of my seminary professors who I did not know for several years later has been recovered. But he was an Old Testament professor and every day he would come into class and he would take off his cowboy hat. I was in Texas and he would say, please join me in a prayer by Mr. Neaton. And of course, this is one of the first prayers we use regularly, one of the most famous prayers by Rhino Deaver and it's also a prayer that is well known within the AA community and for many of the others, so I invite you to join us in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the good. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, and taking as He did this simple world as it is. Not as I would have, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever. And then a ninth step prayer for strength to go forth. God, give me the strength and direction to do the right thing no matter what the consequences may be. Help me to consider others and not harm them in any way. Help me to consult with others before I take any action that would cause me to be sorry. Help me not to repeat such behavior. Show me the way of patience, tolerance, kindness, and love. And help me live the spiritual life. Let us join in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all, we do a worthy service. You humble and hearty thanks. But above all, we are next to our life. We get into the world by the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy. We truly really thank our heart for your support and your grace. Not only with our living, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your servants, by walking for you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the Holy Spirit, the God of the Lord, the God of our Lord. Let us join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.
Hanging on a tree I pluck her down, I'd wash her off And I'd take her home with me Get along home, well get along home Now get along home, since Cindy I'll marry you someday Get along home, get along home Well get along home, since Cindy I'll marry you someday I saw Cindy, she was standing by the stair. No shoes, no stockings on her feet, no ribbons in her hair. Get along home, well, get along home. Now get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you someday. Get along home, get along home. Well, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you someday. 